It is my favorite time of the year and we are going to be painting spooky stuff all month long. Okay, let's get right into it. We are going to be painting a really cool moon scene that I actually put together for a wine and paint night party so this was specially done for one of the parties and I decided to turn this into a tutorial we're going to be doing paintings of creepy stuff all month long uh, I actually started off with taping this off but of course completely optional and in fact when I did the party I think only one person decided to tape it off they all went with a natural watercolor edge and I really liked it uh, I took a wood circle to make the moon you got to have a giant full moon we're going to be painting a blood red moon i'll show you the picture right now and we i want to do a, a big red moon on the painting so find something round i obviously had these little wood discs that i got and it was because i had that paint party and you know a lot of people were going to be painting this so it made more sense for me to get that but for you to do one painting i mean any moon painting um, you know, you can even get cheap circle stencils from anywhere. Uh, use cups upside down, little bowls, whatever you want to make a moon. Or just, you know, wing it. <laughs> whatever you want to do. It's the moon. It's going to be blood red. Some people did a regular moon uh, and it turned out really, really pretty. So it, I did the blood red just because I thought it worked with the halloween theme but it is a personal choice so you're going to basically do wet on wet for the top well really for the whole painting but you know i always do kind of sections at a time because it dries up and i'm really using a nice big mop brush here just so it gets a lot of water spread pretty quickly um, without drying up so you have to put water everywhere except the moon do not wet the moon that's a line i never thought i would ever say but anyways, don't wet the moon. Take black uh, and do black on the top half. And in fact, I think one of the things I told people, they could do blues and purples. Some people did like a whole purple theme. It was really cool. I did the black. Uh, you could do blues, purples. We're doing kind of a creepy sky. So get creative uh, and definitely, you know, do whatever you like. And again, don't get paint on the moon. And the water just helps keep it blended really nicely. And oh gosh, I'm doing just a hodgepodge of just, let's get this paint on here. I'm going all over the place. Uh, and I think at one point I did paint outside the lines. Not what you want to do. <laughs> but I was just, I think I was just kind of flying through this. Uh, and, then, and then I was like, oh, got to slow down a little bit. And then once you get the black done, we're going to be doing a, a really cool effect with the moon glow. Um, when do I do that? Do I do that now or later? I think I do it later. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, it's, it's optional if you want to do it. I'm kind of doing it with my paintbrush, but I do take a cloth and do it a little bit later. And it's up to you if you want that moon glow. Like I said, some people went without it and it turned into this really nice contrasty stark moon. So personal choice. I like the moon glow, especially with the blood red moon. Uh, it's so completely up to you. And then you kind of fade into the, you know, kind of the horizon line. I went with the blue. You could do purples, reds, oranges, yellows. You don't have to do... Uh, you could do a lighter black. Um, you do want it to be a little bit lighter though because we are going to be putting trees and bats on top of here. So you want it to be able to kind of stand out. And that will definitely help you with that contrast. So again, wet on wet. And the more wet the paper is, the easier it is to blend. Here's my moon glow. So I just took a, I took my washcloth, which was not wet, so dry cloth. <laughs> and just went around the moon to give it that kind of glow um some people use napkins some people used a dry paintbrush i think at one point i go and do the paintbrush as well and it's okay that it's kind of blotchy like that in my opinion because uh, a moon glow isn't always perfectly uh round 
and then I do kind of fix it a little bit. It's a little much for me, but I did go through with my brush, clean, dry brush, and fixed it here. I think I'm adding a little bit black because I'm like, eh, took too much off. And then I go through with my brush and, and kind of just blend it until I'm, I'm really comfortable with, with it. Because I did this for my paint parties, it's an easier one. It's, I try to do easy ones for my paint parties because most of the people are drinking and you get more than two people in a room together that are drinking and it can get quite hectic and chaotic. So I try to keep it pretty simple and that way people can follow along while they're drinking. We only had one incident of somebody dipping their paintbrush in their drink, although they did do it twice. And I think they were the one that was drinking the least amount, ironically. But uh, what's really cool about doing the paint party and then doing the voiceover here is I'm kind of using a lot of their experience too to try to share with you because it there it varies everybody has kind of a different experience and just seeing kind of the stuff people came up with and I really like when people have their own creative input into their own paintings I do put bat silhouettes on here somebody put hanging uh, bats on a tree somebody else had uh, owls somebody didn't do anything um, so there was a lot of different stuff and it was really I loved it I thought it was really fun night some people were pleasantly surprised with their paintings and some said it was harder than they thought it would be but you know it is I try <laughs> I try so we let this dry and I mean we didn't want to sit there and watch paint dry right so we let it dry let it completely dry and then you're going to what the moon what the moon only nothing else because now we're just going to be using the moon and I'm using of course the Dr. PH Martin you guys know that that is my go-to paints um, although I will say I did buy new paints uh, and I am definitely going to do a video with them because I love them they're the Colero uh, metallic gold and silver paints and I have just been having, if you follow my Facebook page, I've been having so much fun with these metallics. So I will be doing a tutorial with them because I'm so in love with them and think they're so fun. Uh, and, uh, and, they're, and they're not expensive. They're cheap paints. I mean, cheap. They're, I think they're like less than, less than $20, maybe less than $30. i will put a link for them in the description, even though I'm not using it in this, in this video. But because I'm discussing it, I'll put a link just so you can see it. If you want to pick it up. Uh, ahead of time. I promise I will be doing a video on it. Probably not until November though because we are only doing the spooky stuff this month. So what am I doing here? I mean we're like halfway done with the moon and I haven't even talked about what we're doing. So I'm going to do the top half in a blood red. It's not really blood red. Uh, it, I mean it looks blood red. It's not. It's per, persim, persimmon, persimmon. That's an herb. I think, right? Persimmon? Persimmon. I don't know how to pronounce that. I just realized I don't think I've ever said that word out loud, and I'm not sure that I've ever heard that word out loud, so I have no idea how that's pronounced. But it is a, it is not a hydrous watercolor. So the hydrous is a light fast, which means that it is a, it will sustain the time with the light. This is not like that. So if you want a hydras, then go ahead and use a hydras. But I want to use this color, so I did the the persimmon. How do you pronounce that? And on the top part, and then I did a really light golden brown on the bottom, just to give it that little bit of depth. And did it a little bit darker on the edges because I want to make it look round. The moon's round. Now I know if you guys are anything like my son, who is the biggest science geek ever then you'll probably be irritated with this because the moon is perfectly round and the moon is not it perfectly round in real life which he did point out to me and i know that but are you really going to try to look for a shape i mean it's just easier to find a circle anyways i am blabbing right now i digress so here comes the trees i mean this is kind of i feel like i do these in almost every painting these are a little bit more naked, stark, skeletal trees, a la Halloween. 
and I just sped this up because this part gets pretty boring if I didn't but it's just basically your skeletal um, tree limbs and branches and I just really put extra like little branches on the bigger branches <laughs> does that make sense I hope it makes sense it's I mean you can see it right this is it's just very basic and it gets obviously a little bit wider and thicker as you get towards the bottom I only put a couple <laughs> I only put a couple of them because honestly <laughs> because it was starting to get boring I got really bored with this tree because there's so many branches I've noticed that if the tree has leaves they're easier to do and they take less time and this because the trees were big this was a bigger paper I did a bigger paper because again I was teaching a class I wanted them to have a bigger painting to reference which in the end didn't matter because they we mirrored it onto the TV and they had the full nice big size painting there again things you don't need to know um so I I just got bored with it I always had a better reason I I didn't but I actually liked the way it turned out some people had it go all the way to the left and they had their trees kind of go over the moon which I thought was really really pretty so if you're doing this tutorial and you're not as impatient as me uh, then give that one a try because I think that turned out really really cool to have the trees go all the way and then over the moon so because I got lazy I'm like I oh, let me throw a mountain in here <laughs> and Bob Ross moment is like, hey, let's just put a mountain in here so I put the mountain in there and really just at the bottom nothing major just wanted to kind of put something in that page corner of the page now i'm putting in bats and the bats are i'll, I'll pop up a little uh a little image to reference here not that it's going to really make a difference for you because honestly you just if you just google uh, bat silhouettes you, you'll come up with a bunch of results that will help you and to reference this was a really good experience for me because I thought this would be more difficult for people um, to freehand draw a bat. And so I brought carbon paper and tracing tools for people to use so that you can trace a bat onto the painting. And nobody used it. They all felt comfortable and they were all levels of craft skills and they all felt comfortable freehand drawing their bat and they all came out exactly the way they wanted it to so bats apparently are not hard to paint and if you mess up it's black silhouette you can kind of just you know improvise uh the this first bat and i definitely add the little claw things right above the wings if you see that there because i think that really just makes it kind of extra creepy that you can see that i did mess up one of my bats i think it's the third one I just I don't know what I was doing I think I was trying to make it at an angle and I overdid it and I wasn't really that happy with it but you can't I, I fixed it as best as I could and I think I was okay with it in the end um, one thing I think if you guys list do watch my videos you'll notice that there's always something in my paintings that I'm not thrilled with <laughs> there's always something I'm like eh, I could have done that better and then there's other things I'm like oh that came out better than I thought it would. So I wanted my bats to be different. What is that? Angles? <laughs> like wings down, wings up. So I, that's what I did here. And wanted the bats to uh, really stand out as well. And I'm, I'm going to do the third one. And the third one's the one I mess up right here. And then the reason I'm doing the one to the right is because I'm really waiting for my moon to dry because I'm going to put one over the moon as well. And the one over the moon, the other thing to start with the one to the right because the one over the moon is really going to stand out the most. So you kind of want to leave that to the end once you know you're comfortable with the bats. So this is where I messed up. What am I doing here? This, I don't even know where I thought I was going with this because this in no way looks like it. <laughs> Excuse me. So I messed it up and I did the best I could to fix it. So I, I'm i just taking my time. Can you also see where I messed up my blood moon too? I think it just, I don't know if I overpainted it or if it just, 
if it just bled a little bit. I don't remember. It's been a while since I painted this, but it just stuck out a little bit. I wasn't loving that either. Um, the only way I could fix that would be to make the whole moon a little bit more bigger, and I didn't want to do that, so I kind of just left it the way it is. Look at this bat. It looks like... It doesn't look like a bat. But I did whatever I could. It looks like a bat with a really long body. Uh, I actually like bats. I think bats are adorable. And some of them, like especially the micro ones, are super cute. I love bats. I know people find bats creepy. I mean, I don't know if that's because of the whole Halloween vampire thing, but I really love bats. If you watch like some of these bat rescue things, they're so cute. Um, so here I am doing the one over the moon, and I did the tiny little ears. I started with that, just kind of testing it out to see to make sure it doesn't bleed into the moon. Once I saw it was okay, then I added the rest of the bat, and I'm taking this one a little bit slower again because it is over the moon and it's very contrasty to it so I want it to be just right so I went a little bit slower which is probably what I should have done with the entire thing is slow down um, this is advice that would be fantastic for me to give to myself and to follow but I don't if that makes sense so I'm, I'm adding this last bat and I think that this one was my favorite, probably because I took my time to paint it <laughs> instead of rushing through it. Uh, this is one of the reasons I love watercolor. It is instant gratification. This video is 18 minutes long, even though I edited it, it wasn't really much longer to paint it. I think altogether this whole thing took me, took me about 30 minutes to do. When I was teaching the class, it took about an hour and a half. Uh, granted, you know, there's, 15 people or 10 or 15 people drinking so <laughs> some there was a lot of uh, conversations happening and things like that it did go a lot longer than we were thinking it would and it was mostly because of the the just conversations and socializations which I love in my painting parties because that's what it's about I want you to have fun and enjoy yourself and that is you know that's that's everything for me. This is why I call myself the not so serious watercolor artist. I want people to enjoy themselves, find this therapeutic, let this be your release. Um, and then here it is. I took the tape off. I, I love that clean edge. And like I said, this was a really easy, super easy, simple one to do. Let me know how you do. If you change any of the colors up, I'd love to know. And if you know how to pronounce persimmon, tell me that too. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my video. And then let me know what other Halloween type paintings you would like to see this month. Happy Halloween.